hello. Thank you everyone for watching me and tuning in and being interested in what I'm showing you. And thank you for liking my husband over there. And is that the shirt that matched the lady on the cruise ship? It is. You're wearing the cruise ship match. I wonder where that lady lived. Where is she? Anyway, um, so he's going to help me because this video, well, first, thank you for watching me. Thank you for giving me likes and subscribing. And if you're new to my channel, I love you. Is that begging for subscribers? I know I am. But um, it's the name of the game. He who has the most subscribers wins. <laughs> and now we're a community. That's what they tell me. We're a community rooting for everybody. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, I always wonder though. Never mind, I won't say what I wonder. Because sometimes I say too much. Reveal too much about our life. So I have to be... But this is a reality show. I look at my channel as the real reality show. This is what we do every day. This is what our life is. This is why we are the way we are. And do you think it's a reality show, Jamie? That's pretty much a reality here. That's Fix your hair. Smooth your hair a little bit. Yeah, right there and on the other side. See, because we're helpmates. We help each other. I'm not criticizing them. That looks perfect now, see? We help each other, and if you have a good marriage, that's what you do, and so we do. All right, so this video, I'm showing you the quilts that I've made. Now, one winter, a couple of winters ago, I made eight quilts because, here's why I did it. I was going through my fabric closet over there, it's in my sewing room in the other room over there, and I like, look at all this fabric. And it was all some scraps and for quilts and for, you know, lot, you have to have a lot of yardage for the back piece for quilts and stuff. So I thought if I make these quilts, then I will have more room in here in my fabric closet so I could hang things and do stuff. So I ended up that winter, I was in a roll and I just went for it and all those fabrics and I made them into quilts. Then guess what? I had eight quilts that I had to find a closet to put them in. So it didn't help me as far as making purging and making more room for myself. Why do I have so much fabric? Because uh, in our my town, before I married Jamie, two fabric stores went out of business and they were friends of ours. And so my sister Carolyn and I were the sewers. And so we got tons of fabric from them. Mm -hmm. And then... Tell them your philosophy. He who, she who has the most fabric wins. wins. So I was a winner. Anyway, she who dies with the most fabric wins. She who dies with the most shoes wins. I'm winning on two factors. And are you excited about that? <laughs> yeah. But I don't really buy fabric anymore. Because, aren't you glad? Because I have so much and I have to, I can't die till I use all that fabric up because my kids are just going to take it to the Goodwill. They won't keep it when I bought it to use it. But now it's so cheaper to buy clothes than to sew them. You sewers know that. So I'm just going to use all the fabric for quilts and then give them to my 35 grandchildren. Now I had three quilts that I took out. Was it three? Yeah to take out to Tyson, my son's daughters, Caitlin, Angela, Veda. So I did take three quilts to them because they aren't married. And I always say I'm giving them for a wedding gift, but you know, what if they never get married? Then they don't get a quilt. That's not fair. So I just gave it to them and they're probably shacking up with somebody anyway. And that way you got rid of a little bit. You didn't have to store. Yeah, and it was for them anyway. And then Craig got married, and I let him come pick out. And Autumn got married, and then I let her pick out which ones they wanted out of all the quilts. Now, they picked out ones that I wouldn't have picked out. I have my favorites. Your TV, honey. They can hear your TV. So either shut the door or pause it out there for me. Okay? Sorry, honey. 
sorry, my bedroom door upstairs is broken. And once in a while, it just floats open. I think we have a ghost. This room is kind of cold too, because you know, we had snow yesterday. We're supposed to, No, tomorrow's supposed to be good weather. And then the next day, cold again. That's what Trevor told me. All right, so I'm gonna show you my quilts and Jamie's in here to help me because I've laid them all out in this bed and I'll peel them off each one and then you can see them. And then I'm gonna tell you about how I made each one and what the fabric was. And so if you're not the least bit interested in fabrics and quilts, then you might not wanna watch. Jamie though, he's a pretty smart guy, but when it comes to quilts, how smart are you? How much fabric does it take to make a quilt? Probably about, uh, let's see, <laughs> six yards on a side. He's pretty good. Uh, king size quilt. Do you think if you had to make a quilt and you could get a million dollars, could you do it? If I could make a quilt? If they said, whoever makes a quilt gets a million dollars, could you do it? I used to quilt with my mother. You did hand quilt? She had yeah. you doing it? I or tying them. them, tying them or quilting. No we, no, we only quilted them. Yeah, those old timer ladies, they just quilted. But yeah. I taught my daughters and my granddaughters how to make the quilts. And then they would have uh, their friends and neighbors and stuff. They'd all get together and come over. And oh, quilting parties? Have a quilting party and everybody would talk and visit and quilt. At our church up here, they have a basement in the church. And so... People donate fabrics. I probably, when their mother died, they take the fabric there and they have people donate money and they make the quilts for the humanitarian people. And that's every Wednesday and you can go, but they just tie the quilts. But I don't do it because, well, I'll, I'm gonna tell you the truth why I don't. It's probably naughty of me, but my son, Chad, and his kids were, you know, they grew up in town and they always had a, a secret Santa or a, the angel tree or whatever for Christmas. And so every year they would get each get a quilt and that place would donate them to the school. The humanitarian donates them to the school and then the school gives them to the poor families and on and on. And so, I mean, it's ridiculous that Chad has a probably each kid has eight quilts from all the years. And if they were giving them to people who like they used to send them overseas to when an earthquake happened or something like that. But now that costs too much to mail them. So they don't do that anymore. We used to have humanitarian projects all over the world where if there was a disaster or anything like that, they'd bring in truckloads of stuff. And there were rules, like they would have disaster kits and you'd have rules from the countries. You couldn't have any holiday print fabric and stuff like that. I know when they had the hurricanes and the stuff that I mean, I thought they had a big flood down here in Texas. They sent a truck sent in lots of trucks on the hurricanes. Yeah. But they don't do that with the quilts anymore. So I just don't have a testimony of the quilts going to good places. Like, I know one time a, somebody in town, their house burned down and they took a bunch of quilts. That was good, that was good. But it doesn't seem like there's that many needy people that need all those, cause you know, they put out, they put out the quilts three every Wednesday and that adds up. And so I don't go because I had to start babysitting and I wasn't gonna take kids with me down there running all over. And then um, they wanted me to do it again after I quit babysitting. I don't know how those old ladies do that quilting and stuff. Your back hurts so bad tying a whole quilt. So I don't go. And I don't enjoy visiting with those ladies much. In our church, they have a humanitarian program where you can <laughs> donate money and stuff like that to help. Our church probably does. Millions. Well, they They have one of the biggest humanitarian programs in the world and you can donate money and stuff to help the humanitarian and you know like Angela said it wasn't bad to donate all the quilts and all the time to make quilts and stuff if you knew they were going to be shipped to 
real needy people. But uh, around here, they get, I don't know why they quit shipping them out. And it kind of made people not want to make them because of, they just had tons of them and didn't have a lot of people to give them to. So There's, it's kind of hard to find needy people around here at Christmas time because everybody wants to give to the needy. Well, and we so, have, because of the fact that we live in a very cold place here, we have virtually no homeless people here at all. And there's no homeless shelter. Uh, there's no homeless, like, ladies shelter. There's nothing like that here. If there was any homeless here, they'd freeze to death in the winter. Uh-huh. So the homeless pretty much likes to live in the warm places like... California. California and the other places where it's warm during the winter. Yeah, you couldn't live under the bridge here. So... Anyway, it's probably good there aren't needy people, and they do have a food bank here. Yeah, people need food and stuff sometimes. Yeah, there, but... but anyway, so that's why I don't do it, but anyway, I'm probably, you could think I'm terrible, but I bet a lot of you would not want to do it either. Like, you go nine in the morning, I'm not up by nine in the morning, and they want you to work till like one or two. Well, that is just too many hours bent over a quilt frame and tying quilts and your fingers get hurt, pulling that needle. Oh, and these are all machine. Well, no, not all of them are machine quilted. All right, I'm going to prop the camera up here. We're going to start now, Jamie. Oh. I don't think it's going to work that way. This tripod doesn't have a swivel to swivel down. So I need to... Maybe if I lean it like this. Yeah, that's it. Okay. All right. As you can we tell. We don't bump it. It might get knocked off. Well, we're not going to bump it, are we? We're going to be perfect at it. This is a baby quilt. And as I made other quilts for the grandbabies and stuff, I would save the pieces in a bag. And then I just started sewing them as I had them. And so this quilt cost me nothing except for the bat in the middle. What's mm. the back side? The back side's just plain, all plain blue. Plain blue. And it has fuzzies on it. But anyway, I was going to make this, give this one to Autumn for Ezra. And then I had another one that was one panel and the center's quilted, but she chose that one. I would have chose this one because I love a flannel quilt that's warm. And, but she wanted that one. I let her choose. So, And this is all machine quilted. I just do it on the machine. And it doesn't have ties on it, and it doesn't come undone. So, I'll save it for the next. All right, now this one. This one, uh, Craig could have chose it. Anybody who goes camping would want this one. Because it is flannel and denim. And you know those weighted blankets? It's heavy, it's too. It's a heavy one. And I broke so many needles on this denim stuff jeans. I'll never do it again. And this is called a rag quilt in the middle here, sewing these. And then the rest is flannel. Oh, kinda, I, did, I did put denim up here. Kind of feels lumpy though in the middle. Well, you're going to be underneath it. I know. And underneath it's all nice. Let's see. So, Craig didn't want it. Maybe part if Parker's a, a camper or Connor's a camper. Here, let me. I'll do it to your side. Don't knock the camera though. And then the back side, see, it has the red and the. Here, pull it your way. You is can... it kind of a cowboy one, maybe? I don't know. But anyway, nobody chose it. The girls didn't want it. Tyson's girls. I gave them their favorite colors. All right, now there's this one. And I did a little of the rag around here, but the center is all hand quilt. I mean, it's machine quilted, the squares. And it was all leftover fabrics. These squares are a little bit smaller than the ones on that other yeah, quilt. Yeah, because then I could use more fabric. And they don't feel quite as rough. They're not, because they don't have the, only no, this has the edges. The... But this is all nice. But see, you'd have to have a, I don't expect people to use them for bedspreads. Because that, you know, it's not very pretty. But they're for warmth. And then this is the back. And this is just fabric that I had that I wanted to use. So these are the colors they get. You, depending on how you wanted it to look, you could put it either direction on your yeah, bed. Yeah, you could. And the other thing is, 
Oh, and Jamie's daughter, granddaughter got married, Elise. And, but her colors were teal and teal, black, and blue, I don't know, I can't remember. So none of these matched her, so then I quickly made another one for her. Now this is the prize one. These moose are hand stitched. It's all hand quilted on this one. I don't know if you can see the moose from that angle on the camera, but. You wanna hold it up? The moose up where you can so they're see. all hand quilted the outside out here isn't but i like how it's got these flowers in the green and the i flags. always like green anyway yeah so. you do like green he wants to give this to his grandson but um his grandson grew up in saint george he doesn't care about moose and that motif and he's a city kid he doesn't even like afton my so, son, his dad helped me get my moose I know, up in the... but he, he didn't. He didn't. Family room. And then the back is the green. Well, it's kind of a beige. It looks like it's got... Some this is better. sage green. Yeah. yeah, they are. This, this is sage green. Sage green looks more like beigey green or something. So, anyway, this one... You know, if they knew about quilts, they would have chose this one. But they don't. They're just going for color or something. I don't know. I don't care. I just let them choose whichever one they want. So whoever gets married next will... These have to be folded to fit in the bags that I have. Yeah. All right. And then I have this one. And this is flannel. And it's a heavy one. It's for warm nights because the back... Let's hold it up so you can see the bear. The back is real pattern. flannel too. There's a bear on it. The bear, the bear was the pillowcase, and then these are the sheets. So, and the back was fabrics I had because that's what I believe in. Just use fabrics you have because I'm old school. You know those people who are quilting and they have to go buy every fabric for the thing. You could spend two hundred dollars. And that's not my goal in life. If you want a bedspread and have it like that, then I can see it. But if you're just making a blanket to keep warm by, then I like these kinds. I think the bear is a symbol for the Russia. Well, is maybe maybe one of the grandchildren will marry a Russian. Isn't Russia the bear? I don't know. I don't know either. I'm just guesting. Guest, guesting. Guesting. All right. Now, I gotta tell you a story about a quilt. This is the new mattress pad for this bed because this bed is the worst bed in the house. It's our old one, but it was a new one, but we didn't like it because it was so hard in my hips. I couldn't lay on it with my bad hips, so I traded. it. So it's a new mattress, it's just that it's so hard. So I bought this memory foam. I just got it a month ago. <laughs> yeah, because we were gone two weeks. So I'm saying, Jamie, please help me do the bed because it's hard for one person, one old person. It's hard for two old people. He goes, why didn't you have the grandkids help you? Yeah, the grandkids were here yesterday and I was hoping that I know I could get out but, of doing this by having them. But see, here to yesterday, do it, didn't do it. I know because I had to take Brimley to swimming, I mean, dance class and run around and I, you know, they were here. So Jamie's gonna help me, but I gotta tell you my quilt story. If I don't forget it, what it is, forgot it. No, I know what it is. All right, I made a quilt and it was beautiful, pink and black and dark pink and black and had a big bouquet in the middle and it was hand quilted and it was a masterpiece. So I was gonna give it to my sister Shauna because she had breast cancer and was a survivor and I never made her quilt, so I took it out to Oregon to give to her. Well, my mother saw it, and I think I had another quilt too. I took two of them. I don't know, maybe I just took that one. But anyway, my mother saw it, and just, she just fell in love with it. Oh, it's the most beautiful thing. So I decided I will make Shauna a different one because her favorite color was red anyway, which I did, I made her a red one, and then uh, mother was saying goodbye and I ran into her bedroom. I put that quilt on her bed. She didn't know about it. And then we left. Hey, Jamie, I'm ready. Let's go. I got it. You know, I pretended I had to go to the bathroom or something. So anyway, then 
you know, we didn't have cell phones then, but she couldn't wait to call me and go, I can't believe you gave me that. When I walked in my bedroom, I was so happy. So then she used it for a bedspread a long time, but then they redecorated, but it was still like brand new. So then um, my first granddaughter was my mother's first great grandchild. And so she remembers my mom, Caitlin. She remembers mother and everything and loved her. So when we went back to Michigan, I took that quilt and gave it to after Caitlin. Mother, after your mother died, you got it back? Yeah. Oh, see, he's interrupting me, but that needed to be said. He filled it in. We help each other. We're helpmates. Yeah, my mother died. And then Carolyn said, here, take this. You made it. It's yours. So then when we went to Michigan, I took it to Caitlin and I said, since you remember your great grandmother and you're the first grandchild, great grandchild, I'm giving this to you. And oh, she loved it. So that's, and it was my, I know I made it. So that was that part. Plus it was my mother's. So anyway, that's another quilt story. Do you have any quilt stories? Did your mother make quilts? She made quilts. They, yes, they would get that trico fabric. One time our ward had a, uh, the ladies did a bazaar or something. Oh, I yeah. guess what they call them. Yeah, bazaar. And everybody went there and, and everybody made quilts and brought them to sell. Oh. And they were trying to raise money and stuff. Building fund money. And probably. we had a, there was an older lady in the ward that, in fact, it's the one that we bought our, carved elephants in the living room and there's a lot of things she ran a store and she would buy things from estate sales and stuff antiques and we got uh oh you, you can't even see jamie now they can't yeah see I'm, I'm off the camera but anyway we bought the cape buffalo horns that we have up there from her and they probably haven't seen those and uh we bought those carved elephants. We bought a lot of things from her, but she brought this big red and black. It was kind of the, flannel, the square flannel and denim. And it was a big, thick, thick oh, heavy, it is heavy. heavy. You couldn't put it in your washer to wash it. It's and too a heavy. big, heavy, heavy quilt. Beautiful, big. And it was a big one. And we take, we would take that camping every it time. It was the best one. When we went hunting and everything, we'd take that and, Guess Cover where up. it is. Guess where it is. Guess where it is now. I don't know where it is now. It's at the tree house. Oh yeah, we've got that one. Because it's so, so warm, and so it's up at the tree house that we keep it. Anyway, clean. I bought that from this. Lady. And it's like it's like cabinish, you know. It matches the motif of the tree. This house. lady's husband used to do taxidermy work, and so he have all these little stuffed animals around and everything, and. But he died a long time ago, so she's been a widow for a long time. And well, she died too. She finally died here a few years back, but we always liked her. And so every spring we would pick big bouquets of flowers and we'd take them over and give them to her. She'd about cry. She'd it make was, her so well, it was her birthday. It was her birthday that was time of year. Birthday in the spring. Yeah. And, and so we'd take her big bouquet. We'd give her a birthday present and she never expected. It was yeah. totally unexpected. She never expected us to do it. And she always loved Angela for doing that. Oh, well, I loved her. She was, the, and I'd go into her store and she had them. She wasn't expensive at all for her antiques and stuff. And I bought a lot of stuff from her and she, I would stay in there and just visit with her. She was the same age as my mother and I missed my mom. So it was like, you know, Marjean was her name. Yeah, her name was Marjean. She had six daughters and no sons. And... Anyway, she would laugh. We would have fun. So I miss her too. She was my friend in town and now I don't have a friend. I only have one friend, Nancy. Which we need to have them over sometime. Because they're our only friends. And and, and her husband, Dick, he really knows how to work, Jamie. Because they used to work together and build yeah. houses. Dick, I would always hire Dick to help... Uh, when I was building houses and stuff. And then once in a while he would get a job and then I would go and work for him and we'd work together. Okay, we have to take this off. 
but she when I, the first time I moved here and she was really nice to me and she didn't most of the people I felt like they're comparing me with Jamie's dead wife and she didn't and her kids weren't perfect either like some people's kids are perfect they don't do anything wrong but her and I can tell everything what our kids naughty things they did stuff all right so we got to take this is a feather mattress that and I thought would be wonderful. I never liked these. Cause they're well, they weigh a ton. Lumpy and they... But my grandma, why I got it is because my grandma had a feather tick. With, from her real chickens that she had feathers and she made them. And I had it. And like, and we had a station wagon and we'd go on trips and we'd put the feather mattress, lay the seat down and put they it back there. Very and seldom ride. used chicken feathers for... Oh, well, she used stuffing. goose, whatever. They were, it was the and best one ever. Had duck and goose feathers. That was it. That was it. She did it right. I didn't know what it was, but I know I have. To keep, I don't know what to do with the thing. I have to always keep correcting you because you're always saying stuff wrong. Now look, who slept in here last? Where's the top sheet? Look, the top sheet's clear top down sheet's here. Been, and look what else is in the bed. What food crumbs? I think we had rats sleeping in here. Somebody's been eating. This is popcorn. They probably lay yeah, in there. Yeah, there's a TV here. Popcorn while they're watching TV. Well, see, I needed to change the bed anyway. But if it's just you them. You can knock the camera. I know. If it's just the grandkids coming back again, I just let them sleep in the same. I don't change the sheets for them. Because, you know, they only slept in it one night. It's just that they ate popcorn in bed. This is what I don't like. Is this the mattress pad? Yeah, it never will stay in place. Well, you have to, honey, you have to have a mattress pad. Just always slipping that way and this do way. Do we want, I want the that underneath the mattress pad. That's how you do it. Because you The mattress want, has a pretty pattern on it. Yeah, it's, it was a nice, it's a nice bed. This is an expensive mattress, but it's but hard. But see, hey, lift it up. Show them how we had a leak in the ceiling here. It's reality. I don't, know, I don't know if we want to see that. Yes, it's reality TV. We're going to show them everything. So go over oh, there. We got a big bubble over there. I know. Show them how it's, this bedroom got leaked three times. Show them because they need to know so they don't feel alone. Because our bathroom and bedroom's up here, our bathroom. Okay. So I'm going to take you up and. Let oh, you they're going to get a good view. Ceiling. I can't see what I'm looking at right here. All right. Right there it is. See the ceiling up here, big the bubble. bubble in there. And then over here is the other bubble. Now, and if it was outside where somebody could see it, I'd make sure it got fixed. <laughs> what? If, you mean if it was in the yard? Yeah, if it was... Let's see, where do we want... That's good. A little bit more your way. Yeah. And this headboard was Jamie and Elaine's headboard. And it was wood then. Well, we're trying to prop this camera That's up. That's good. Perfect. Trying to and prop it up at a certain angle. Jamie and Elaine's headboard. And so when we got married... Well, you painted it and I think it's stuck. It's fine. Just leave it. They, The grandkids just put stuff in there anyway. And they're paid for otter pop wrappers. These are doors that are supposed to slide. Yeah, and it worked good. But anyway, the when paint, I married Jamie... Just leave it. Things. I don't care. Because I don't want them putting, they put stuff in there. Okay, get that. So, anyway, I told Jamie, uh, I don't want the same bed as your dead wife. And I know you guys would agree with that. So, for Christmas, he bought me my head, that he bought me my headboard I have now. And a new frame that has drawers underneath it. Okay. And it's lovely, because he loved me so much then. I still love you so much now. Okay. All right. And this this is my old mattress pad. So that's why it's not pretty. But I don't care. Still going to use it. It's good. It was expensive. And you Start, have to protect. Starting to get little balls of. Well, it's old. But you it. have to protect the mattresses. And one time we went to Jamie's daughter, the one that died. But And look, I've sewn it and repaired it a million times. And... Um, she was nice enough. She gave us her bed, and it was real nice. But she didn't have a mattress pad, and you could feel it—the buttons. It was like tuft in the buttons, and oh, 
So her birthday came and I bought her a mattress pad. And she goes, oh, when you slept in my bed, you could tell I didn't have one. I said, yeah. <laughs> but anyway. I don't know if I'm... All right, lay on it. Tell me if how it feels now. I gotta get clean sheets. But we'll do that. We won't bother you anymore. It's how long, look at the minutes. How long have we been talking? I don't know, enough to get me out of breath. On the red. 30.22. All right, see now look, here's Jamie. Now don't think I'm bad making him do it because now he's out of breath and all the Jamie lovers, Team Jamie, are gonna go, you shouldn't make him do that. I can't do anything without getting out of breath, so. Do you, I'm does your heart feel breath. like it's beating faster? I don't know if I do too much exercise, it does. But it doesn't hurt? I don't know, this morning, I don't know. Sometime oh, I much was, better. I was doing something. I didn't know if I was going to make it back in the house. Jamie, you need to carry your phone with you. I've fallen and I can't get up, so you can yeah, call I, me. Like that commercial they have of the guy in the in the golf course laying there. Here, sit up here. Help, I'm falling and I can't yeah. get up. Sit up here because they've never seen us in bed together. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh this is Come a tough bed. Come on, fun. See? Right oh. Do you think it feels better now? Does it feel good? Would you be able? I would sleep here. Hey, I heard this one guy, movie star guy, say, now, you should sleep in every bed in the house and try out each bedroom. Oh. <laughs> so you will know what guests, what you're making your guests sleep on. So do you want to sleep on this one tonight and try it out? I don't want to. I'm trying to decide how... It is still kind of hard. It's much better than it was, though. It's not bad, though. Some people like them like this. <laughs> so, and you, the more you get to know us, you'll know how I make Jamie do things that he doesn't want to do. <laughs> I make him. Because it's entertaining. Yeah, and then when it comes to gardening, I have to make you do things that you don't like. I don't like that. Digging in the dirt and it gets in your fingernails and... Come on. Groveling in the I'll dirt. I'll dig the holes. You just drop the bulbs okay, in. Okay, that's your hobby. So I'm going to make you do my hobbies with me. And you have to quilt quilts and sew and... I know how to quilt if you're hand quilting. All right, you get to help me. And we're picking off these fuzz balls. Yeah, this is... I don't old, know why it's peeling it's off. This, you know what? It's like some cotton out of the inside yeah. fluff. But I try to get sheets that match the bedroom. So those purple sheets, they're kind of plum colored, grayish plum color. Is it easier just to go wash them and then put them back on the bed? Yes, than it is to put them in the wash, get out a new pair, and then you wash them, then you gotta fold them and put them away because you aren't gonna use So I'm just gonna wash those and then tomorrow we'll put those sheets on. You make a little brush to take these little... Oh, I don't really care. The sheet's gonna go on it. They won't yeah, even know it's here. will be okay here. with the sheet on it. So um, you don't have to help me put the sheets on. If you're on. gonna be like a perfectionist, you could go get your brush If and I had a B&B, and &B, a bed and breakfast or a air bud, you'd have to yeah, get Yeah, if we had to perfect. be perfect, we could do stuff. But we're not like perfect. That. So, um, you, you're going to get to be done now. And I'm not going to make you put sheets on until you rest up. Now, maybe... We have enough bedrooms here. We almost could put a bed and breakfast shingle down at the road. Oh, no, I don't want to. Mm. I know I don't want to either, but... You have to live with people and then cook for them and, oh, and get up early. Yeah, come on, early... Angela, get up and go cook. He knows I'm not an early riser. See, now his dead wife, she was an early riser. She got up at the crack of dawn and made well, pancakes. Well, we always had to back then. We had cows we had to milk. And... What time did you go to bed at night? We didn't go to bed till 10, 30, or 11 because we didn't get done with the work until then. Oh, no wonder you prayed to get the work done. And you had to be out there milking cows by six in the morning again. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like that life much. Well, farmers have a... Did you like being a milkman? Milking a milker? A dairy. That's dairy. not a milkman. It's I'm a sorry, dairy. dairy. Did you like it? I don't know. 
You didn't know any difference? Kept us alive, and that's, we raised our family being. But he always had another job on the side. Like, he was janitor at the church. Milk yeah, cows, go to, do janitor, milk cows. Well, I, I did masonry work on, see, I'd have to get up at six in the morning and work about three hours. To milk? We'd milk two and a half. It, well, I guess the milking usually took about two and a half in the morning. Then you'd go work for eight hours a day. Then you'd come home and do two and a half hour milking again. So you didn't get to watch any nighttime shows when you got home from work? Oh, well, sometimes you got to watch. You know, At a nine o'clock one? Nine to ten sometimes. Your evenings suck though. What if the kids had school things? You couldn't go to them. Well, no. his dad sometimes would help him. We got to go on a few vacations occasionally because my dad would stay home and do the milking for me. That was nice. And he was very nice. To, he was the best guy. He was the best dad to have. To, he was, He never complained. He just, any time we needed him, we asked him and he'd say, sure, I'll help. And he had one leg taller than the other because he kept breaking his hips. So he had to have crutches, but he still would work. And My dad once told me that he'd broken... 65 bones in his body. In his lifetime? Well, he well, must really had osteoporosis like, or something. No. He lit, Well, he helped build the Palisades Dam. He, he got in a lot of construction accidents. He's had horses oh, buck him yeah. off and had horses run over him, had horses kick him. Farm work. Had a lot of things like that. Oh. And then when he broke his... He was doing a lady's... Uh, well, over her, she had a cement steps on her porch, and he had to do something up above the cement. I think he was doing something on the edge of the roof, the eaves or something. And his ladder oh, slipped wow. out on the ice. A lot of ladder accidents. And he, well, he had he'd taken a hatchet and chopped little holes down in the ice to hold the end of the ladder. Which usually works, but then I guess a big chunk of ice broke loose and let the ladder slide. And he came down and landed on the cement steps and broke his hip the first time. Oh, wow. And then... If we if we talk long enough, you'll get all those fuzzies off of there. Oh, I already got quite a few. You right did here. good. But anyway, then... The... What's that noise? Do you have a sprinkler on? There's water running. Well, it's gonna leak again. And then we turned this faucet on outside the wall here is the outdoor faucet last winter, summer, spring. We turned it on and it flooded the room. At least it was clean water. But my dad, after he'd broken his hip once, over the next 20 or 30 years, his hip, the socket that they put in kept wearing out the bone and then it would break off again, and then they'd put a new one in with a longer shank down in the bone, and then it that'd wear out, and then it'd break. Finally, his leg just kept getting shorter as the bone kept wearing out. So one leg was longer than the other. Then he'd take uh, these old thong uh, flip flops and cut the get one about the right size to fit him. If it didn't fit, he'd take the Rubber. shears and mm -hmm. shear them down the right size. Then he'd glue those on the bottom. Pretty soon he had a big old thick heel about four inches thick, trying to keep his leg. So he could walk. But see, I understand that because when I had the first hip done, it was longer than my other leg. It is horrible walking with one leg, even an inch off the other. It hurts your back, it hurts everything. So, so I remembered what he did. So I said, Jamie, I'm, go get me some flip flops. Didn't you ask him one time how tall, tall he was? And... Yeah. <laughs> so he stood on one leg and he goes, well, if I'm this tall, I'll be this tall. If I want to be this tall, I'll be this tall. <laughs> he was funny. But um, anyway, so I copied him and then, you know, you can get the inserts for your shoes, but then your shoe doesn't fit right because it makes your foot squish in there better so anyway i did like he did and i just used shoe goo and glued the thong the flip flop the rubber. rubber on the bottom of my shoe so and then i tried it i needed a little more so then i used the other one and then i didn't have to i could get, do my physical therapy better because my legs were the same 
Is that heater on? Maybe that's what's on. The kids were here and they probably turned that heater on. I think on. that heater just came on. And it sounds like running water. I don't want another flood in here. We had three floods. The toilet did that one. And then that one was that. And where did this one come from? The bathtub. And this over here, we'd had this for 20 years and it never froze in the winter. And then one last year sometime it Okay, broke. Jamie, remember which button to push to stop it? The red button. Because, you know, you're probably sick of listening, and we've talked enough. Okay, well, bye.